He was the pianist for the Allman Brothers Band. He's played with every artist imaginable. I'm talking Eric Clapton, George Harrison, John Mayer, Miranda Lambert. Since 1986, he's been the touring musical director for the Rolling Stones, earning him the title of the sixth Rolling Stone. But the title he's proudest of is the Tree Man. That's right, he was named Tree Farmer of the Year for his conservation work on his Georgia pine tree plantation. I want you to welcome my friend and the coolest tree farmer in all the world. Please give a big welcome to Chuck Lavelle. Chuck, great to have you here, my friend. Thank you, Governor. It's been a minute. It has, and it's, it's too long a time that we've had a chance to visit. But, you know, I, I find your career just one of the most remarkable ones in all of entertainment. You played on recordings at the ripe old age of 15 in the Muscle Shoals studio, uh, one of the most <laughs> remarkable places where some of the greatest hits have ever been recorded. 15. That's I mean, right. how do you even get a gig like that? It wasn't easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I used to hang out outside the uh, studio door. It was a very small studio, Muscle Shoals Sound. Not a lot of room for hanging out inside, but I had a connection, a gentleman I knew that was an engineer and producer there. And uh, I would just hang out, wait for that door to open, hope that uh, I could get invited in, meet somebody. Uh, maybe sneak over to the piano and play a little bit and see if I could get some attention. And uh, I used to do these demos. I think we got paid 25 bucks a day to, <laughs> to do like, you know, about five or six <laughs> demos for people. But I played on one recording session for a guy named Freddie North. Uh, he was a great R&B artist. And the song was called Don't Take Her, She's All I've Got. <laughs> that Johnny Paycheck made a hit later on a country version. Yeah, but this was the a that. rhythm and blues version. And lo and behold, it was a hit, you know. And of course, I, my name wasn't on the record, but I could hear it on the radio. And I knew I was in those little grooves, you know. <laughs> when did you start with the Almond Brothers? How did that happen? That was in 72. I had moved uh, to Macon, Georgia, where Capricorn uh, Records yeah. was established and sort of made my way up the ladder. I, I went there in 69 the first time and then moved in earnest in 70. And that's where I met my wife, Rose Lane. Rose Lane was working in the record company. So when the doors of the, uh, uh, of the offices opened, you, you saw this gorgeous woman sitting behind a desk there, which uh, was a very good sign for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that was over 50 years ago. Uh, well, we actually got married a couple of years after that, 73. So we just celebrated our 50th anniversary. Congratulations. Good for you. Love you, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> and then you ended up, I mean, you've played with everybody and recording and on stage, but the Rolling Stones gig, I mean, let's face it, there's not another band like the Stones. They've been at it for 60 years and still going. Uh, you know, I tell people when they say Joe Biden is too old, I said, it's not his age. Mick Jagger is the same age as Joe Biden and Mick's prancing all over the stage and still doing shows, you know, Fantastic. so that's not it. But how did you end up getting that gig with the Stones? Well, I think the story of the career has been one thing leads to another. So uh, I was with the Allman Brothers, as you know, and as you noted, for a few years. And uh, Bill Graham, who was a known as the impresario of rock, uh, yeah. Bill was a wonderful promoter and just loved, loved rock and roll music and promoted many, many bands. He had the Fillmore East and the Fillmore West. Uh, the East was in New York. The West was in San Francisco. Very famous clubs that mm. so many early rock and roll artists played. And uh, he loved the Allman Brothers Band. I think it was one of his favorite bands. When I came in, I think he thought, well, what in the world is a piano player doing in a guitar bass band? But I won him over and we became friends and remained friends for years. Well, fast forward, he became tour director for the Rolling Stones in 81. And uh, they wanted to try some new blood. And so Bill remembered me and he suggested my name to the guys. Hey, uh, you need to call this guy down in Georgia, in the backwoods of Georgia. <laughs> and I, within, you know, 36 hours of the phone call, I was, I was at an audition. 
Wow. Keith Richards has said about you that the stones wouldn't be the stones without Chuck Lavelle. That, that's a pretty big deal to have <laughs> Keith Richards say that. Very kind of him to say that. And I think the reason he does, uh, my, one of my predecessors, you know, the, the Stones have had a number of great piano players through the years playing on their records and live, but uh, the band was actually started by a piano player named Ian Stewart. Hmm. And uh, Stu and I, Stu was still alive when I came into the band. We became very good friends. And uh, I learned a lot from Stu. Stu was a fantastic boogie-woogie player. He had a wonderful left hand. You know, he could really get around that left hand and, and then, uh, you know, circle with the right. And he taught me a lot of that style. And I, I think uh, when he passed away, which was in 85, uh, Keith kind of looked to me to take that role on, playing that style of music on certain songs that they did. I mean, and listen, can, can I bring this sure, up? Sure, yeah. Uh, I bet... None of you would imagine that <laughs> Governor Huckabee has a connection to the Rolling Stones and specifically yep. to Keith Richards. I do. So just a quick <laughs> background. Uh, the governor and I met in Little Rock when I was at a forestry conference. He was speaking. I was speaking. Uh, he sent me a note on his card. He said, hey, Chuck, I'm a bass player. Let's stay in touch. <laughs> and, and we did. <laughs> Fast forward, uh, the Stones come to Little Rock to yep. play a show. And I emailed you and I said, well, Governor, are you going to come uh, see the show? He, yes, I am. And I'd love to get backstage. Oh, that'd be great. So he comes backstage and we get to talk. And he said, you know, there's something that only I can do that you have to understand. He was still governor at the time. There's something that only I can do for Keith Richards. Really? Well, what is that? He said, do you remember there was an incident in Fordyce, Arkansas, many years ago when Keith was arrested? He said, I can give him a pardon. Uh, yep. <laughs> and so, so I, I went to Keith's uh, manager, a wonderful woman named Jane Rose, and I said, Jane, you know, I know this is kind of crazy, but uh, the governor has offered a pardon to Keith. She said, well, let's go ask him. So we, we go knock on Keith's dressing room door, and uh, Keith... Uh, Listen, the governor of Arkansas would like to give you a pardon if you're up for it for, for that Fort Ice Arkansas thing. Key said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did. And you did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to tell you, there was a reporter who saw that I was doing this and came in real, you know, like couldn't believe I would do something like that and said, so I guess you just did that because he's Keith Richards in the Rolling Stones and he's a big famous celebrity. And I said, that's exactly why I did it. You better believe it is. He said, and I said, if you could play guitar as well as he did, I'd give you one too. But most people are not aware that Chuck Lavelle's role as the sixth Rolling Stone is just part of his uh, amazing life. The other title is The Tree Man. And there was a documentary all about your life how in the world, I mean, most people would never think that a rock and roll keyboard player with the Rolling Stones is one of the nation's foremost experts on tree farming, named Tree Farmer of the Year in the entire United States. Pretty big deal. <laughs> Governor, it's all my wife's fault. <laughs> it usually uh, is, it, isn't it? usually it? Yeah. is. No, Rose Lane's family has been connected to the land for generations, and... Uh, is tending uh, cattle, uh, row cropping, uh, other livestock, but also attending forest land. Hmm. And fast forward to 1981, she inherited some land from her grandmother and it became our responsibility to carry on this heritage of stewardship that, that had rubbed off on me through the years, you know, having known the family, spending time out in the mm -hmm. woods with them and everything. And uh, so I, I thought of all these options. Well, you know, Georgia's <clears throat> known for peaches. You got pe pecans, uh, uh, shrubbery. We thought, you know, cattle farming was going to be a lot of day to day. And, and one uh, morning at the breakfast table, my uh, brother-in-law said, you know, if you're not going to plant this 50-acre field down here, as we usually do in a crop, you might consider planting trees. And sort of a light bulb went off in my head. I'd never really given it a lot of thought. But the first thing that hit me was, where does that thing that has given me so much joy and such a great career come from? Yeah. From the resource of wood, the piano. Yeah. So, so many other musical instruments come from that resource. And so it was almost a spiritual connection to say, wow, maybe by learning about forestry, 
And, and let's, you know, let's talk about some of the other things that trees mm-hmm. and forests do for it. Uh, you know, materials to make our homes, schools, churches, offices, uh, materials to make ma- books, magazines, newspapers, packaging products, all those boxes that come from uh, Amazon that goes through our, our doors. Uh, you know, they sequester carbon. They're one of the best sequester uh, of, of carbon that we can have. They're just, I think, our most important natural resource. So I became a student. I mean, eventually I enrolled in a correspondence course on forestry when I was touring with a band called the Fabulous Thunderbirds. From <laughs> yeah, we all know them. You bet. <clears throat> Wonderful Texas band. And I was doing the homework in the back of the bus or in hotel rooms whenever we would have a hotel room. And it took a a couple of years to get through it. And, you know, it's not like having a four-year college program in forestry. I wouldn't admit to that. But uh, I learned a lot from that course. I learned a lot by talking to others. I learned a lot by going to seminars and reading and then getting out in the woods. So, you know, I'm thinking about your tree farm of the year. You really are one of the go-to people when it comes to tree farming and conservation. Personally, winning Grammys our tree farmer of the year, <laughs> which has been the greatest thrill for you. One of the greatest honors of my life was uh, given an honorary uh, ranger, forest ranger mm. award, and I, and I have the hat and everything. <laughs> I <laughs> love Moki Bear. It's the coolest hat in the world, I tell you. Uh, but it was so funny because that occurred uh, the same year that I did get a Grammy for the lifetime achievement of the Allman Brothers Band. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, both things are just intensely passionate. I am passionate about them. I'm passionate about the music. I'm passionate about uh, ecology, forestry, the environment. And, you know, it's not just about the trees in the forest. It's about what's within the flora and the fauna. And uh, there's a wonderful quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson that I think is so beautiful that in the woods, we return to reason and faith. Hmm. So maybe if we had some of our uh, political discourses out in a national forest, (laughs) we'd uh, figure some things out. How about that? That's a great idea. And by the way, I want to say one of the greatest joys that I had in watching the documentary, The Tree Man, was how it depicted the phenomenal relationship that you and your lovely wife have enjoyed through the years, the closeness and just the exemplary marriage that you have, it's portrayed in the film. It's absolutely one of the most uh, delightful documentaries that I have ever watched. And I hope if people haven't seen it, it's about time they do. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you, Governor. And uh, it really is a love story. That's, to me, what the film is all about. And uh, Rosie, as I mentioned earlier, 50 years now and, and counting. And uh, she's my inspiration. She's my partner. And, and uh, we just, we're blessed. You know, we're blessed. We uh, live out in the woods on the property that was on, once owned by her grandmother. And, you know, we sit on the back porch in the rocking chairs at the end of the day, maybe with a little toddy and watch the birds come in. I, they call me the bird man of Bullard. Bullard is our little community. I've got more bird, bird feeders. Man of bird man of Bullard. I got, you know, we see the finches and, and uh, the little chickadees and the cardinals and everything come in. And it's just, we live a wonderful life. And it really helps me, uh, you know, it's 180 degrees from rock and roll. Yeah. But it kind of helps keep this thing in the right it, it, way. It's an amazing story, and you're an amazing person. And if you go to Huckabee.tv, you can find links to Chuck Lavelle's music and tour dates, which you can go see, but also information about his tree farming and conservation efforts. You'll also find a link how to stream the documentary The Tree Man. It's available on Amazon in a lot of different ways. Do see it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video. And there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded. 